If a good Victorian child was meant to be seen but not heard, then traditionally an agent was the opposite, representing and advising their clients, getting them good deals but away from prying eyes, behind closed doors in the sleek boardrooms of top clubs. Not anymore though. The past five or so years have seen the rise and rise of the super agent, exerting more power and influence than we ever thought possible. And right up there at the top is George Mendez. But just who the fuck is he? Put simply, he's one of the most influential men in football, an ex-nightclub owner who uses connections with players to rise to the very top of the game. These days, names like Cristiano Ronaldo, Jose Mourinho, Diego Costa, Bernardo Silva, Renato Sanchez, Edison, and more are all on his books at his company, Gesta Foot. James Rodriguez to Monaco, Mendes. Aguero to City, Mendes. Di Maria to United, Mendes. The list goes on and on. Claiming to have conducted 68% of all transfers at Portugal's Big Three, Porto Sporting and Benfica from 2001 to 2010, Mendes is everywhere. Sounds like great work if you can get it, right? But just how did he get started? Where he really took off is after Porto's Champions League win of 2004. The fact that he did a lot of his work out of Porto anyway, and uh, lots of his clients were sellable at that point, of which uh, Jose Mourinho was ob obviously one, several players were also involved. And from that point forth, and the work had already gone in before, but everything that goes through Portugal of any value at all has got the Mendes mark on it. Whereas once the average English football fan might have only ever heard of Mendes if their club was locked in a transfer saga to bring in the next big Portuguese prospect, now his work is in your face on match of the day and at your local ground every other week. Along with his first ever client, ex-goalkeeper and current Wolves manager Nuno Espirito Santo, Mendes has turned the West Midlands club from championship also runs to one of the Premier League's most intriguing teams. So as the most obvious benefactors of Mendes' grasp on Portuguese talent, how do Wolves fans feel about one man having such a tight grip on their club and have the past 12 months just been a dream they'll one day have to wake up from? Or will it be that Wolves become a real household name in English football over the years to come? He gets things done, doesn't he? He, you know, he moves things, he, 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 he brings, brings things in, takes things out, but you never really know how. How, how, how did we sign Dry Martino for £5 million? It's great, he's an amazing player, but how, how do you manage to sign him for £5 million? He'd walk into the Chelsea team tomorrow. OK, so it's not exactly the biggest shock in the world that Wolves fans are loving living out their football manager fantasies in real life. Across the Midlands and Nottingham, though, a similar story is playing out slightly differently. A host of high-profile Mendes-inspired Portuguese signings had many expecting Forrest to be this year's Wolves. But it hasn't quite panned out that way so far. I don't think there's any reason why we can't do a Wolves, but um, in my opinion, to jump up from the depths of the bottom of the league, surviving two years ago on goal difference and having a very mediocre to lower league table finish last season, I think would be a hell of a jump to go straight into the automatic spaces or even the playoffs. A lot of Nottingham Forest supporters do want that the fact that we have spent so much money and brought in so many players is that automatic promotion is the only way. And with the EFL clamping down on FFP, do things get nervy when there's a possibility that what you were sold in the brochure might not be quite what it seemed? Inevitably, having fingers in so many different pies comes with complications and can become a bit messy. Something that didn't escape the attention of the EFL, who investigated the link between Mendes and Wolves at the back end of last season. But having given him and the Wanderers the all clear, not finding them in breach of third party ownership regulations, does this pave the way for a whole new way of doing things? You thought a director of football model was a bit out there? Try having a super agent appointing your manager and making all your signings. The fact is when you've got owners coming from outside Europe, in some cases they don't have the football management expertise. So this is a shortcut to getting the right players and getting the right people in place because in the case of Wolves we're not just talking about players we're talking about the coach as well who's you know his number one guy George Mendes number one guy and someone someone he really trusts and was his his, his number one at the, the, the very beginning but in terms of an agent who's that well connected 
I think there are a lot of clubs who would go for that. Yet although it might seem as though Mendes' masterful management of the football ecosystem has made him a complete law unto himself, FIFA's proposed discussion on curbing the amount of money paid to agents could see Mendes and all agents needing to rethink how they approach the transfer market. I mean, there's, there's no doubt that the explosion of agents over the game in, in the last 15, 20 years is something that has been difficult to regulate. But these players are, especially now, especially in the modern game, are, are, are valuable commodities. But they're valuable commodities with short careers. And when they break through, sometimes at an early age, but sometimes when they're mature enough to, to, to make decisions, to get the right advice, to have someone there with them is not only empowering, it's essential, I think. Whatever happens with Mendes in the future, if he popped off to Monaco tomorrow to live out the rest of his days or continue to pull the strings at some of the biggest clubs in the world for decades to come, history will remember him as one of the logical conclusions of modern football 2.0. A man who, as David Conn of The Guardian put it, has ridden the wave of football's vast changes, made an unthinkable amount of money and made himself indispensable as an oiler of the wheels.